So like you have that mm. super nice truck with a thousand dollar payment yep. and that, that brings your DTI really high. So the DTI goes higher, the pre-approval amount comes down. Hey guys, this is Daniel. This is episode two of getting to know amazing entrepreneurs here in San Diego. Our special guest is Luis Ceja. He's a entrepreneur. He's a mortgage lender here in San Diego. Luis, can you tell us a little bit about um, who you are? What do you do? Yeah, of course. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Luis Ceja. I am a mortgage loan originator here in San Diego. Um, I'm actually licensed in the state of California, but I do live here in San Diego, so most of my business is here. Um, I'm bilingual. I've been in the business uh, real estate and uh, mortgage combined about four years, coming up on four years in February. And um, yeah, it's pretty much nice, pretty man. Much four there. years. What was the, um, how did you get started into, into uh, mortgage lending? So mortgage lending itself. So I got my, my real estate license in uh, February of 2020. And I got it. My dad's been in real estate for a long time, and um, we had like a like a family emergency that happened, and it required us to be in LA a lot. Uh, a family member was uh, was up there, like in a in a hospital. So right. I was seeing my dad being able to control his schedule a lot and just make make the time to be there with him and be able to work from there. Um, and that's when I it kind of like. Uh, hit me like I, I should do something similar like I should mm -hmm. do something where I can control my time mm -hmm. um, time yeah, of course yeah so uh, that's I went to school got my stuff for for real estate got into real estate and then the pandemic hit like as oh, soon shit. as I got licensed I got I got licensed February 2020 um, I started with Century 21 and not then not too long ago not too long ago yeah not 2020 yeah. yeah and then pandemic hits so like it was like it was kind of crazy because no open houses, like everything mm -hmm. was like, hit, like you know, hitting the fan and no one had been through that. So like you're talking to agents and like, how do I prospect? How do I get deals? How do I do this? And they're like, we it's don't know new, either. It's new yeah? to everybody. It's new to everybody. Wow. So it was a learning experience and that's kind of why I dove into social media because it was really the only way to like get out and, and talk to people and uh, put messages out there mm -hmm. and educate people without like you couldn't door knock you couldn't do open houses so like the only way to really uh show your services was through social media so that's interesting man the, pan the pandemic yeah absolutely how um how was that a challenge how, how did that challenge you like i know you got your license and then the pandemic hit how how was that like how did you um what was your strategy there Man, just I, social media social media yeah what, I, were you, what were you doing on social media i was watching a bunch of tom ferry like like tom every ferry. day i was watching tom ferry um jason pantana he's like the social media guy with tom ferry mm -hmm. and i was just doing whatever they were saying you know educating removing fear from the market like uh, i don't know if um if you were like around realtors or if you have friends that were talking about it i mean everyone kind of knows an agent you know yeah so um, there was a lot of fear in the market. Like they were saying like the market was going to crash, home prices were going to come down. Um, and they did for a very like little part of 2020, I think it, or yeah, 2020, I think it was in April where they dipped mm -hmm. and then people were buying, everyone was saying, don't buy, the market's going to crash 2008 all over again. And then it just started going up and like interest rates are so low. It, it was just a crazy market, but um, I attribute a lot of it to the Tom Ferry um, YouTube channel. It was just U University of YouTube, bro. Like YouTube University. That's what <laughs> I we're was. Uh, I was doing that and and just trying to be like a normal person. Like I feel like people forget what social media is really about. It's yeah. not a. It, most people use it as a highlight reel, mm -hmm. but they forget to be social. So they'll post yeah. things. They'll do all like everything, and then they forget to actually be social. So when someone comments, like. Like it's mm, a conversation. Like if you were in person and someone was right. like, "Hey, dude, that's an awesome video," you wouldn't be like, "Thank you, yeah." Like a thumbs like, up, you yeah, know? Like man, you would be yeah. like, "Yo, dude, thank Engaging, you." Like, yeah. what? What did you like? You know, to actually have conversations or like, someone DMs you, actually have a conversation. And Absolutely. I think that's what kind of helped because, like, and that's been my goal is like to actually build connections. Yeah. So like, if you actually build connections and you actually care about people, like, it it kind of builds a community, builds trust, and people are more comfortable to reach out. 
Absolutely, um, man. Absolutely. But, but sorry to cut you off. But to answer your question, like as far as why I got to mortgage lending, yeah, I was in real estate, and then everything I would get asked was mortgage related. So I was trying to learn oh, mortgage stuff, like oh, do I qualify for this? Do I, and you see a lot of agents do that. Oh, rates are at this, like yeah, as if they're lenders, but they're not, you know. And, and yeah. the thing is. That's, those are the main questions that people had, like, do I qualify for this? What programs are there? All that stuff. So then they got to a point where I was like, why don't I just become a loan officer? And Since like- everyone's asking you already, right? Right. <laughs> so like, why don't I just become that? And then another thing was- Can um, you still exercise your realtor license as a mortgage lender? I can, yeah. You I can? I do have it. I, I don't do it. Um, it's not ethical or just- No, not, not that it's, it's not just, ethical. You, your niche is more of a lending. I mean, the, the way I see it is like, everyone's gotta eat, you know? You have to build partnerships. You can't like right. try to like take right. everything yourself. So like what happens is, you, you know, you work with, with agents, you work with lenders, you have appraisers, everyone has a job to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you try to do everything, it's gonna do more damage to your business long-term than it's gonna help. Because if I get a lead, like let's say someone comes to me with no realtor, I can help them. I can sell the house. I, I can help them buy the house and everything. But it would be better if I linked them up with a good agent who's doing it full time, so that the client gets the best service from the agent, and then I build a good relationship with the agent because I'm also referring clients to agents. You know, so it's it's it benefits everyone. I feel like, and it's in the client's best interest to have someone that's fully dedicated to that craft to Absolutely. service them. How do you how do you build a relationship with uh, other realtors? Um, really it's, I mean, it's something that I've, I'm constantly, it's, I'm so new to the business, you know, so it's right. like something, I feel like everything changes, um, different personalities and stuff, but, different personalities, um, absolutely. I do try to provide a lot of value. I try to also, uh, just be like a good person, see how they're doing, check in and all that stuff. And then, um, if I can refer them business or help them grow their business in a way. So. If I attend a seminar and I find something valuable, I'm hitting up my agents and be like, yo, this is what I learned. Oh, like, okay, okay. It, you know, just kind of like sharing everything being I'm social. learning. Yeah, absolutely. being social. You gotta exactly. be social, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, speaking about rates, man, where do you see rates going next year? I know uh, 2023 was kind of crazy. What do you see 2024 going? Um, it's really hard to say. I mean, everyone's saying they're gonna drop. Um, it's really hard to say. Even the, the pros get it wrong. You know, the economists get it wrong. The, right. the 20, 2023 prediction, I, I believe the high was like 5% and it went way way above that, you know? So yeah, that's true. no one really has a magic ball. Like if someone tells right. you where rates are gonna be, they're full of shit because <laughs> like it, it's not true. Like yeah. obviously you can kind of see what, what the market's doing, where the like what the world's doing, where the fear is at. Um, you know, economic events and stuff like that. The economists are saying that they're gonna drop, but it's never a guarantee, you know? Do you think they're gonna drop? I do think so. You, you do think I so. do think so. Housing. If price. rates drop, house prices are going up. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and the reason I say that is like right now, uh, in, interest rates have been pretty high this year, but there's no supply. So it's just, a, it's everything is a game of supply and demand. So like if you have no supply and you have demand, home prices or prices for that thing are going to continue to go up. Yeah. Now, right now, since rates are a little bit higher, it eliminates a lot of the competition or yeah. like maybe they don't qualify or maybe they just don't want that high payment or they can't afford the high payment. Um, but as soon as they drop, it brings in a bunch of buyers. So when that happens, sure, you might have more inventory because the sellers might also be like, well, this is my opportunity to move out of this house and get a different house. Yeah. But then they also become buyers. So it also increases demand, you know? So, so, so yeah, so like if there's a hundred people that are 10 people that are available right now when interest rates drop there's going to be like what 50 100 people available mm -hmm. making that the price of the home increase by a, what percentage do you think that that's five percent ten percent increase oh increase yeah on um, home prices that's that's approximately your experience <laughs> man I, I mean what do you think 
in 2020, 2021, like you wouldn't see an offer. Like if a home was listed at 500, you wouldn't okay. see an offer under like 530. So it was always like 30, 40,000 over. Mm -hmm. And then there was like homes that were like, they were offering 100,000 over. And the, as a thing, like whenever you make an offer on a home, let's say it's listed at 500,000, mm -hmm. right? You make an offer at 500, but then they have 10 offers. Sometimes what they do is they just go ahead and pick the highest one or the best one. But a lot of times they'll send a multiple counter offer saying like, hey, everyone send your highest and best. And then you're like, you saw the home, you already envisioned yourself in it, you're excited. So then you're gonna offer more. Your realtor's gonna be like, how much are you willing to come up? So then you run the numbers and you're like, I'll go 530. And then someone's like, I'll go 540. I'll go five. Right, and right, then right. once that happens, then it, it's increasing property values because appraisals, that, that one's gonna appraise yeah. that 530 now. And then any other comp is gonna have that comp or any other uh, home being listed is gonna have that comp. So it's gonna right. slowly increase it. it. Yeah, absolutely. But Every, even, everybody does that even right now, like uh, I would say like a month ago or a month and a half ago, I had a client find a home that he really liked. Mm -hmm. He was one of two offers and he had to come up 30,000. So the home was listed at 500, he offered 530, got the, got the home, closed on it. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it's gonna get pretty competitive. Like, <laughs> and it's not just money, like you can also waive inspections. You can do other things to be competitive. Um, that, that market just, it's, it's draining for buyers and for, for agents too. Absolutely, man. Um, speaking of that, what disqualifies a, a, a person from buying a home? So the, the biggest thing is credit. So a lot of people don't actually know their credit. Um, and it's something that's easily, easily fixed. Like you just either, it's something that we can help them fix or if it's like a little bit too extreme, um, we refer them out to like a credit repair specialist. And sometimes it's a matter of like three, four, five months. Um, okay, so credit itself. Um, and then the second biggest one is income. So income, uh, What's I mean, an average income for seven, oh, what is it? $500,000 home. For a five hundred thousand dollar home, you, you should be making like approximately twelve thousand bucks a month. 12, that, 12, that's 000? before taxes. Yeah. Is that just a one person or the whole family inside? Whoever's on the loan. So you can oh. bring on one person, two people, three people. Um, they can all go on the loan and then qualify like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, income has been the the most difficult one. Another one is like people tend to have really high car payments. So like you have that super nice truck with a thousand dollar payment yep. and that, that brings your DTI really high. So the DTI goes higher, the pre-approval amount comes down. So sometimes, the, sometimes being disqualified just means you can't find something in that price point in San Diego. You know, like if you're approved for 200,000, you're not finding anything in San Diego. 300,000, very difficult. 400,000, you're finding a two bedroom, maybe a one bedroom. Um, and then so on and so forth. So sometimes you do qualify, it's just not for the amount that you need in the place that you need. Mm. You need a partner, right? Or a third partner, fourth partner, right? <laughs> yeah. What can people do to get ready to buy uh, like a house, like do's and do nots? I know you said uh, truck, don't buy a thousand dollar truck. Um, so what can people do um, and do nots? Yeah, so the biggest thing, the biggest thing would be to reach out to a mortgage professional. That's like the number one thing because um, they're gonna run everything. They'll check your income and all of this. It like whenever you do that, it doesn't mean you're gonna buy right then and there. Like right. you can reach out. They can do a soft credit pull, check your credit, make sure everything's good to go. They check your income, make sure everything's good to go. They they run everything. They tell you, hey, this is how much you qualify for now, and maybe it's not what you want. So then we put a plan in place to see where you want, like what you can qualify for in the future, yeah. or maybe you need to fix some things like credit or. Maybe um, income wise, you need to fix some things. So that's the biggest thing really is reaching out to a mortgage professional, having them check your scenario and then you can. Why, why are people not reaching out? Like they're just like on the fence. Why are people not reaching out to realtors? Why are they not reaching out to mortgage lenders? Um, what, what's like that thing that makes, separates them? Like, oh, I want to, but like, I don't want to, you know, no strings attached, you know? I think it's the fear of being sold. Okay. Um, I've had like a few people reach out lately where their family or friends um, purchase a home and I help them and then they tell them like reach out to Luis, reach out to Luis and it like takes months before they actually reach out oh, okay. and sometimes it's they get on Google, they Google, it's like going on WebMD right like you, <laughs> you Google it and you're like oh my god I'm dying and they're like I will never qualify 
And then they reach out to the lender and they're like, I do qualify. So sometimes it's a fear of thinking that you won't qualify. Sometimes it's the fear of being sold. Like they don't feel 100% ready. So they're like, oh no, like once my lease is closer to being like done, I'll reach out. But then like if something comes up, then that's gonna like, pro like delay the process, you know? What's a good uh, prepping time, like timeline? I would say reaching out like three to six months before is pretty good. Um, yeah, six months is, is enough time that if something is wrong, you can fix it. Mm. So like if you reach out six months in advance, um, it doesn't tie you in. You're not tied into the lender. Um, you're not tied into the realtor. Like there's no, um, you're not forced to purchase. You know what I'm saying? So you can reach out, get all the information you need, get all your ducks in a row. And then once the time comes, let's say you have a lease that ends in August, mm -hmm. then you'll be good to go by like, I would say like July, and then you can start your home buying process then. Jeez. Um, that's a lot of information, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, people definitely need to, uh, to talk to Luis, definitely. I was gonna ask you, Luis, uh, you said that who do you, who do home buyers need to talk to first, lenders or realtors? I, I maybe I'm biased, but I would say lenders. Why is and why is that? The, I mean, it, it can go one of two ways. It, realtors are more out there, so they're easier to find, and then yeah. realtors know more lenders, right? So they can recommend a lender. Um, sometimes, like it, it's in my personal opinion, like it would be better to do your due diligence and check with different lenders and then talk to an agent. Um, really, you can do it either way. Like if you does find- it, Does it, sorry, does this depend on the person? Like the buyer, like if they're home, first time home buyers or if they're like experienced buyers, like does it depend on the buyer or is just like they, everybody needs to talk to a lender first? I, I would say everybody. Yeah, because really the lender is gonna tell you how much you qualify for. And regardless if you talk to a lender first or a realtor first, the realtor will always refer who they want to work with, you know? So if you go with this lender and you have a great experience and then you go with this uh, realtor, they're going to refer who, who they work with and then you'll get a second opinion. But if you go with a realtor, they're most likely going to refer who they want you to work with. Yeah. And then you kind of feel like that, like, oh, I have to work with this lender, which you don't. You can work yeah. with any lender, any bank you want. Um, it's whoever's giving you the best service, competitive rates. I don't say the best rates because that's, extremely hard to find like there's so many lenders that it's really hard to find the exact best rates but, change very often right yeah and every lender will be a little bit different depending on their pricing depending on their comp so there's a lot of things that go into it but you just want a very competitive rate mm -hmm. you want really good service you want transparency all that stuff so um i would say um either or uh i think it's just finding the right team like if you find a really good realtor they'll refer you, most likely refer you a good lender. If you find a good lender, they can also refer you realtors or, uh, yeah. It's that does make sense though. That definitely makes sense. Like if, you're, if, I, if I wanna buy a house, if you wanna buy a house, um, you need to see if you qualify first. Like yeah. realtors are like, okay, yeah, we'll sell you a house, but what's your credit score? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know this stuff? Can you afford, what can you afford? They're gonna ask you this anyway, so might as well talk to Luis, you know? Uh, Luis, you also said that you have a niche in, uh, w what's your niche inside of the lenders? So lending? I do a lot of VA loans, um, about, VA loans. Mm -hmm. okay. about 80% of my business is VA loans. Can you tell me a little bit about what is a VA loan? VA loan is a loan for, um, military personnel. Yeah. So active duty military, um, reservists, uh, veterans, retirees. Um, they qualify for the VA loan, something that um, you qualify for whenever you join the service. Um, there's stipulations to that, but it's pretty much military personnel. Um, and I, I focus on that a lot because I was in the Marine Corps. So okay, interesting. I was in the service too, and it's just, um, you know, it's a, it's a, I like that community, it's my community, yeah. and I want to work with them. So I work with a lot of veterans, and then I also work with a lot of first-time home buyers. Another one. Nice. What is the uh, like? What benefits does a VA loan give you? I think it's the best loan out there. <laughs> is there? Is yeah, it? I, I I think so. I mean, okay. there's no mortgage insurance. Um, interest rates are a lot more competitive than like conventional financing. Um, it's there's just a lot that you can go into it. Like you can add cost of like um, energy efficiency stuff. You can put it on the loan. 
um, you're able to streamline or earl the, the loan. So like, let's say that you get your, your mortgage and then six payments go by and interest rates drop, you can refinance and it's a lot quicker than a regular refinance. Like they don't check income, they only check credit and if the rate dropped and then... So VA loans uh, give you a lot of benefits. Yeah, it's, a lot of really it's really good. good. What's the worst type of loan? Is there a worst type of loan? No, I don't think so. I mean, it, it just depends on the person's situation, mm -hmm. where they're at. There's so many loans, you know, you have like ITINs, DSCRs, you have bank statements, you have PNLs. You have, there's so many loans. It just depends on the person's needs, where they're at and what would benefit them the most. Like sometimes a conventional loan would be better, but for that person, they need to do a bank statement loan. And even though interest rate might, might be higher, you have to put more money down, it's the best option for them because of their situation. So it really depends on, on every single person. It's different from person to person. You said you were in the Marine Corps. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I was in the Marine Corps from uh, 2012 to 2017. Um, I was how, a- How old were you? I joined when I was 18. 18, okay. Yeah, yeah. So straight out of high school. Um, and it was, you, a, it was a really good time, man. Were you here in San Diego area or did you, they send you out to like somewhere else? No, I was in Camp Pendleton. Okay. Yeah, so uh, North County. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was a really good time. I learned a lot, met a lot of really good people, a lot of good leaders. Um, Has that helped you, being in the, in the military, did that help you with your, your uh, you know, realtor lending and mortgage lending journey? I think so. I mean, yeah. discipline, it, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, work ethic. I, I learned a lot. Communication. Communication is huge, like in this business, you know? Yeah. yeah um, having thick skin. Um, things don't always go the right way. So, like, what I've noticed is whether it's good or bad, I communicate with the agents. I'm like, hey, this happened. This is what's going on. This is a solution. Like, there's always a solution, right? Yeah. And I've come to notice that no matter how bad the news is, they appreciate me picking up the phone and calling them, you know? And I, I feel like a lot of people, they're afraid of that. Uh, they're afraid of that confrontation or they're afraid of being wrong. And in the military, you're wrong a lot, you know? So it's like, there's a lot of like, you know, it, it just happens. So I feel like having that and being used to that, like it's easier for me to call and be like, hey, this is what's going on. Like, this is why it's going on. And this is, this is how we're gonna fix it. And yeah. I've had agents that like, call me and they're like, you know what? Like, I, I just appreciate you letting me know. Like now I can give a good update to the seller. I can give a good update to the buyer. And um, once when everyone knows what's really going on, yeah. everyone's a lot more comfortable. As, as opposed to like not knowing what's going on. Why are we closing late? Why is this happening? Why are you requesting more documents? Like whenever you learn how to communicate it properly, they feel a lot better about the situation. So what was the most difficult part about getting into this business? Yes. So, the, the most difficult part of getting in the business, um, I think was finding the right company or like finding the right place to be in. Um, okay. Uh, everyone just paints like a really nice picture. You know, it's like everyone's got the best thing. Everyone's got the best rates. Everyone's got the best systems. Um, at the end of the day, I think you just have to make the best of what you can with what you've got. So I feel like just having that expectation that it really a lot of the work is on you you know what i'm saying like yeah. i feel like a lot of people get into real estate and lending because they see on social media they see selling sunset yeah and they see like all the glamorous stuff the money the nice cars the nice homes the nice watches all that good like really the, the flashy, part, the, yeah. the flashy stuff yeah. and the thing is it's it is a really difficult career field like getting the getting people to trust you with one of the largest transactions that they're going to do in their lives yeah. is a big deal. So you really have to learn your stuff. You have to surround yourself with good people. Um, like, you know, I've, I've been on two teams and they've both taught me a lot, you know, like a lot. And I'm super grateful for both of them. They're both really good teams. They're, they're great people. Um, and I got a lot of, a lot out of it, but um, I'm still at a point where I don't feel like I'm, I'm where I want to be, you right. know, I'm, you're always learning, always growing, always trying to do more. And then there's a lot of comparison, right? You see a lot of big dogs and you're like, man, I want to be like that. But yeah. then you don't realize like they're on year eight or something and you're yeah, on year yeah. one, you know? Um, but being around those people, you know, um, being around, uh, for example, Mr. Mortgage, the elite lending team, like yeah. they taught me a lot. Like they're, they're 
great teams. They're really good people and they, I learned a lot from them. And I feel like it's just putting yourself out there, learning from people, finding you know, the brokers that um, are doing, are, are at a level where you wanna be and just kind of like seeing what they're doing differently, what, what they can teach you and just learn, learn that, apply whatever you feel is useful, apply what's good and then leave what you don't find useful, you know? But it, it is hard to find um, like a good, a good team, a, a good circle to yeah. surround yourself with, or like good people to have uh, uh, behind you. Um, and it, I, I think it just takes time in the business, and you know, actually seeing different because there's a lot of like killers out there. Like there's yeah. dudes that, or, or, or not dudes, but like people in the business that are crushing it, but they're not on social media. Or there's people out there that are big on social media and they're not doing they're what not is crushing. being shown. You know, so it's, it's just. Uh, putting yourself in that environment and just kind of like seeing like who's doing what and seeing if you can take them out for coffee like you know hey I just want to pick your brain a little bit and right. I think that's really important for both real estate and lending yeah is just surrounding yourself with a good good uh, set of people yeah absolutely building that relationship with like your teammates and like you guys also do referrals like within within each other yeah yeah so yeah. like if you have too many too much on your plate you like refer out or something yeah not, well sometimes not just that but like it's also like if someone does a different state and you don't do oh, that state okay. you can refer that out if someone like has a niche product like let's say reverse mortgages or let's say um bank statement loans or something that you know they're really good at and you might not be as good at and you're, you're trying to market yeah. to this specific audience it might be best to be like, hey, I have a, I, I can do them, but I have a buddy that's like really good at this. So like, let me put you in touch with them. So, so it's, not, it's not all competition, like you also- Not always, yeah, no, like it's, it's it, that's one of the other biggest things. Like I feel like everyone tries to do everything, right? Everyone tries to like yeah. be the expert in everything. And it's so difficult because there's so many loan products out there, you know? you. Sure, you can be really good at them, yeah. um, but I've, what I've learned is like, if you niche down and like, for example, me with like VA loans yeah. and first time home buyers, if that's what I'm mainly doing, that's what's gonna be top of mind with agents. So when they get a, a client that has a VA entitlement and they wanna use their VA loan, they're gonna be like, oh, Luis does VA loans. So they're sending that business there. If you're, if you're doing everything, then you're just kind of like, just like everyone else, you know? So when, when you market it as like, I am the down payment assistance program person I'm, I, and I crush those and you actually learn them and you crush them, yeah. you're going to get more business than if you're everything or if you're... Niche down. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a lot better than doing everything, you know what I'm saying? How do you see yourself going into 2024? What's your marketing like? What's your relationships going to be like? Uh, what's, what's Luis doing in 2024? What's next for you? 2024, I plan on being a lot more intentional with everything. Um, okay. Right now, I'm taking the time to sharpen, sharpen the axe. You know, like sometimes like it's a slow market. Every single holiday season, it, it slows down. And I'm just taking this time to prepare myself, sharpen the axe, get my CRM all, all in order, get all my systems in order. And 2024 is gonna be a lot more intentional with the way that I follow up with people, with the way that I connect with people. Um, the content that I put out, it's gonna be, it's gonna continue to be educational. Um, it's just a little bit more, I always try to see it through the consumer's eyes. So it's gonna be more towards that. Um, and just continue building relationships. Like this is, it's not a get rich quick type of right. job. Like this is, this right. is a marathon, you know? So Absolutely. like, like you're like, the goal is to always be better and like, kind of tweak it to where it's working better. So I'm, I'm 2024, I'm tracking a lot more things, seeing what works, what doesn't, yeah. what I need to do differently, and then building connections because ultimately it's it's a small industry. Who you know really does matter. So long term, it's gonna, it's gonna be beneficial. That's awesome, man. Absolutely. Any recommendations for like photographers, videographers? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's super important. I think video, video nowadays is super important. Um, video marketing uh yeah absolutely I, yeah just, lifestyle getting to know you you know yes yeah. that and it's getting to know you. like people a lot of people focus on like i hate this people post real estate real estate real estate real estate yeah everyone does real estate yeah 
Yeah. It, they have to know, like, and trust you. So post yeah. you, who you are, what you like to just just be authentic. If you like, like, I like going shooting yeah. guns, I post that, and then people hit me up like, oh, that's so cool. There's some people that might not like it, but there's people that do, and you're not for everyone. You know, if you are a foodie, do yeah. that. If you like surfing, post that. If you like yeah. doing yoga, post that. You're gonna your vibe attracts your tribe. Like Tom Ferry always says that. So, like you. That's you, true, you, you have to put it out there like take videos of doing the stuff you truly enjoy if your stuff is like going out and walking your dog post that if your stuff is being with family post it like it people have to know you on a personal the, level yeah, personal. and then they also need to know that you know your job but i feel like the personal one is like the you're opening the door for them to come in the knowing your job you should know your job yeah like it's just like you should but they they have to like you to work with you, you so know? it's yeah so it's not always sell 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 no. like hey you know i'm a person too you know we also like have this interest we have this interest but you know at the time if you need a professional look this is the my, my background and what i know yeah. absolutely man well yes absolutely if you guys are looking for a mortgage lender hit up my friend luis seja he will get you anything anywhere <laughs> yeah he serves the what do you service so i am in san diego um i do a lot of san diego riverside but okay. i'm licensed in all of california all of california arizona is coming soon arizona is coming soon <laughs> yeah. can you tell us a little bit about that uh, I'm, I'm working on getting okay, my license okay. over there yeah there so arizona okay. comes come shortly perfect um, that's awesome but yeah it, it's spanish english um i'm here to help you guys yeah. bilingual all right yeah. so if you guys are looking to you know uh, some help Oh, get Luis Seja. Well, thank you, Luis. Yeah, thanks, bro. Appreciate it.